Uh, what have you seen from somebody? I mean, we know Jordan's a great player. What have you seen from the other guys? Yes, uh, the wide receiver group, number one, they I love how competitive they are. They come out here at practice each and every day, ready to compete versus the defense. And uh, they're learning a new offense right now. They're doing a, a really good job studying, putting the time in. So I just love the competitive uh, nature of practice, honestly, the, the culture that Coach Narduzzi has built. Did Jordan set the example for those guys? Uh, he's definitely a leader. He's definitely a leader, more by example. Mm -hmm. uh, he's starting to get more vocal, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just still learning these guys. They're learning who I am. I'm learning who they are. But uh, he's, he's definitely a lead by example guy, somebody you could look to to see how it's supposed to be done. How big of an opportunity was it for him to participate in Pro Day with 31 teams and Kenny Pickett and national TV? Man, that was awesome. I thought that was a great experience for him. Like you said, all those scouts, GMs, coaches, those, those people there, they got, to, they got to see who he is. And also the relationship between him and Kenny on and off the field, you can see their connection on some of those passes that they feel very comfortable with each other. So I thought it was smart of Kenny to ask Jordan uh, to throw with him. And I thought uh, Jordan did a really good job. Back on, the, uh, back, back on the leadership component with Jordan, uh, it, it often does help to have a vocal guy in the room who's mm -hmm. like, hey, this is what we got to do today. Mm -hmm. What's it like trying to like, you know, you want him to be that, but you, you know, you got to be careful because you don't want to push him, I guess, to not be who he is. Like, what's that balance like? Absolutely. Uh, you never want to push somebody to force them to do something. I, I just tell the guys, be who you are. Be who you are. If you're a vocal guy, then be vocal. If you're a lead by example guy, then lead by example. And at the end of the day, I have to lead the group. And then from there, once they learn how to lead, they'll take it over. Is there anything? Has there been anything from the group that surprised you coming in there? Uh, what surprised me about the group? I would just say how tight they are. You know, because in normal wide receiver rooms, it's very competitive. There's never enough balls to go around, never enough reps to go around, but they're, they're very, very tight. Uh, you could just tell that even off the field that they hang together, they spend time to, with each other. They're always in the building, always in the receiver room. Uh, we fill it up with drinks and snacks, so they enjoy that. And I just like the fact that it's a, it's a tight-knit group. Brad, how's Brad good doing? Oh, man. First of all, I love that kid, man. I love that kid. He's He has so much energy. He loves football, loves to compete, and he's doing very, very well. Very, very well. And uh, the, the entire group, really, and because sometimes it can be hard when you're trying to play fast and play football when you're learning. You can't really show your true talents. But now that they're grasp, grasping the offense, mm -hmm. they're doing a tremendous job. And, and Bradley's really doing a, a good job this spring, for sure. Did you know him at all from recruiting? I, I did not. Okay. I did not. So I was like, how did we miss on this kid? How did we not know about him? But uh, I just want to give a, a shout out to the receiver coaches before me because they've done a great job recruiting because this room is special, man. They're very, very talented. And I'm just a resource here, just trying to help them become better with their craft. What is, where does Jared fit in with this receiver group? Because, you know, Jordan's the obvious superstar, but Litton award winner, mm -hmm. not a, you know, extremely good separator who was, yes. everyone's talking about the portal. But Jared's, you know, he's strong. He, he's the go up and get it. And I want to, you know, bump you off kind of a guy. Yeah. What's his place in this room as yep. also a vet? Uh, Jay Wayne, uh, Jared Wayne, I look at him as Mr. Consistent. He comes in, he checks in, he checks out. You know he's going to do his job each and every play, each and every day. Strong hands, big body, uh, not going to make a lot of mistakes on the field because he puts the time in. He's very professional. So it's, it's been a, a, a pleasure to work with him for sure. And I look forward to the rest of spring and also what he's going to do this fall. How much of a passion do you have for recruiting and what, what's it like to bring those relationships from your previous job to here as well? I, I love recruiting. I love recruiting. I was with a guy by the name of Fran Brown at my last stop. He's now the DB coach at Georgia. So now we're going to be competing against each other. Uh, but building those relationships at my last stop and now bringing them here, it feels awesome. It feels awesome. The fact that maybe a guy didn't visit Pitt yet, but because I came, He's like, you know what, coach, I'm going to come up there. So any way I can help this coaching staff, this team become better, I'm all for it. And I just love competing. I can't compete on the field anymore, so I get to compete in recruiting. I get to compete in my receiver group versus another receiver group, you know? So I, I take that stuff very personal, and I, I just, I just want to win. I just want to win and get the best people that fit here at Pitt. What's your relationship like with Frank? 
uh, because you both come in here at the same time. Mm -hmm. You inherit a really experienced, talented offense that just, you know, scored a whole bunch of points last season. Yes. That's got to be, you know, an interesting vibe of trying to balance, like, hey, we're, we're taking this new step forward, but, hey, we also have all this success to build off of. Yes, yes. Like you said, they had a tremendous year offensively last year, and uh, now we're uh, – installing coach Signetti's uh, offense here and I feel like the players have done a great job number one embracing the offense with open arms number two studying and learning it and uh, coach Signetti he's a teacher man he's a teacher NFL experience college experience and just a down-to-earth guy so I enjoy working with him he's helping me grow as a coach learning this NFL West Coast offense and it's been awesome to work with him and I'm, I'm just very blessed and fortunate to be here. Is that something that you've seen that's common in college football, or pro, just football period, where a unit's had so much success and had a new guy come in with a new system, mm -hmm. and guys just to like, okay, yeah, we're, 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 we're jumping in. Like, is this something that you say that's uncommon here? Or is this like, you know, par for the course with your coaching experience? Man, I, I would say it's, it's uncommon. Because normally when you have success, you're like, I want to do it that way again. But uh, these guys have embraced it, and we're all learning together, and we know that it's a journey. It's not going to happen in 15 practices. It's going to happen over the summer. It's going to happen in training camp. But it's about the journey, and Coach Signetti says that all the time. It's going to take time, so we all have to understand that. And uh, we're going to build to get to what they did last year and probably even beyond. But it's, it's a process, so we're building it, and uh, guys are working hard. Have you thought about how difficult it might be to get everybody enough playing time? <laughs> Seeing you're going to have, you know, you have an experienced running game mm -hmm. also on, on the, on the so attack. So I look at it this way. It's that's a good problem to have. You know, that means we're recruiting well. That means guys are playing well. So as far as the tight ends, the backs, the receivers, all these good players, now it's our job as coaches to put them in position to be successful. That's not an easy job, right? Not not easy, but I mean, we signed up for it, right? Mm -hmm. So I would rather have a room, a, a offense that's filled with talent rather than only one or two guys and trying to figure it out. So mm -hmm. I, I'll take I'll take this problem. <laughs> How do you balance keeping guys' interests when when things like that happen? You know, mm -hmm. like this team this team last year had three running backs, so they were able to work between. Yeah. You know, but that's not that's not common in college. But a lot of times, if a guy's not you know, number one or number two, mm -hmm. he's like, you know, I'm going to go somewhere where I can. How do you, like, balance that and keep them invested into your program yeah. while dealing with that kind of Number stuff? one, I think it's about the relationships as far as coaches building relationships with players. And then Coach Narduzzi building such a great culture here that guys don't want to leave. Uh, this place is awesome, man. The people here are awesome. The facilities are great. So when everything is good, now we just got to figure out, okay, where do guys fit so they could get some playing time. And that's, it's our job as coaches to figure that out.